Hello viewers, Alan here, welcome to the workshop. Uh, I've had a number of people uh, ask me and send me messages about the GoSand lathe and uh, what I think of it and how well is it behaving and when's it going to get an oil change and whatever. So um, for those people and anybody else who's actually interested in that lathe maintenance, which could be a small group, <laughs> if so, I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyway, I've put a short video together which just shows uh, my annual maintenance routine for the machine and uh, I haven't had any real problems with it at all. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and perhaps I'd call out only one weakness which I've found with the machine, which is the electromagnetic brake, which is a great convenience and safety feature, but it's not as powerful a brake as um, the, the, other, the older style of a band around the, the pulley on the motor. It gets the job done, but it just takes a little while longer. Anyway, uh, this is a short video, so let's get straight into it and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the maintenance activity. So I've had this lathe for a year now and I wanted to do um, a proper inspection and maintenance check on how it was travelling. So I pulled the uh, lid off the headstock so I could have a proper look in there and quite pleased with what I saw. I mean you can easily pick out the fact that there are oil pressure lines which uh, feed uh, oil under pressure into the main bearings. The uh, oil pump is in the top left hand corner as you're looking at it and there's a, um, a filter screen on the inlet to the pump which you can't see, it's in the top right hand corner. If you notice the uh, rim around the opening of the, uh, the headstock, there are bits of pig mat dotted around there. That's because there's basically a groove all the way around the, the opening with no drain hole back into the headstock. And um, it's probably a good thing really because as you see in this close up, those grooves actually trap fine metallic particles. I think the, those particles are a par for the course. There's a lot of meshing gears obviously in the gearbox and they take a while to run into each other and in the process I think produce those little particles. Anyway, I did my best to clean it all out, um, particularly when the oil was out. I was able to get in there with a uh, rag and such. But anyway, getting the oil out was an interesting challenge. So after quite a bit of uh, messing around, I found a way of um, getting the oil out without it going everywhere. So I cut a, a starter funnel if you like or spout from a baked bean tin and then sort of uh, cobbled up this arrangement of uh, catching. Uh, it seems to work alright and I haven't uh, got oil all over the place so I'm going to call that a win. Okay time to uh, do the gearbox. Uh, got the baked bean funnel pressed back into service to avoid a whole lot of drips and running back underneath. Again, I don't know how much this holds, so I've got a, an empty 10 litre container on standby, and we'll see. I should imagine maybe 5 litres at the most, probably more like 4. <laughs> Whoever put these plugs in, in the factory, I didn't want them to come loose. They seem to be excessively tight to me main thing for me here is not to drop the plug into the oil container. Alright, off we go. That's pretty thin oil. Alright, so I'll bring you back when uh, it's finished draining. So refilling the gearbox was a bit trickier than the headstock because the um, fill point is on the side of a vertical face. So I had to cobble up a funnel with a right angle bit of tube. Anyway, it seemed to work out alright. And of course I was able to monitor the, the fill by looking at the sight glass. The oil that I'm using is Tonna 68. It's actually um, a, quite a versatile product. It's actually sold as a whey oil and it has uh, tachyfiers and whatever. Um, but the manufacturer of the lathe is happy for it to be used everywhere, including in the headstock actually, although I decided to put um, uh, 33 weight, I think it is, hydraulic oil in there. Anyway, getting the gearbox refilled wasn't a problem. Right, oil change sorted, now checking the uh, V-belts. There's supposed to be about 10 millimetres of deflection at the centre point. Well, we've got far more than that, so I'm going to have to tighten these up. So I've adjusted the belt tension 
and you can see it's a bit closer to 10 millimeters deflection. 10 millimeters comes from the manual for a different lathe, very similar sort of lathe. The manual for my lathe doesn't specify this, but uh, that's got a pretty good feel to me. It might be a bit more than 10 millimeters, but I reckon that's going to be good enough. I would call that done. Next move was to check the bed leveling with the, the Starrett level. Uh, it had moved slightly over the year I've had it, so I had to spend a little bit of time fiddling around and getting it adjusted, and I think I got it pretty close. So now I wanted to switch my intention to the tail stock, and I ran a dial gauge along a test bar to see whether there was misalignment, and yes, there in fact was. It's about 0.02 off, so I've got to do something with that. But I also noticed the dial gauge flickered a little bit, so I decided to switch to um, a DTI. So I'm getting set up now to uh, adjust the tailstock offset. I've um, put a, a bit of soft bar in the three jaw and machined up a 60 degree point on it, so I know that's running true to the uh, rotational axis. Um, this is a, a precision ground bar, and the other end, which you can't see, uh, is supported in a, a fixed um, centre with um, this actually quite a precise center with a tungsten carbide point on the end. Anyway, I've got, the pretty, got it set pretty well right now, as I think you'll see. It's just slowly drifting off a little bit right at the end there. Now, I don't know whether I can get it any better than that. Might give it a try. I think I've fiddled around with this as long as I'm going to. Uh, I don't know how well the camera will actually show this because of parallax and lighting and all sorts. But as I'm looking at the dial gauge, or DTI, that's in the middle of the zero. And, uh, yeah, well, maybe slightly off centre, maybe, but pretty damn close. Just run it back the other way, so we set it to zero here. Best I can. Run it back the other way. And I'm going to call that done. I mean, whatever the discrepancy is, it's over um, about 250 mil. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to account for anything. So calling that done. So as a final check on the tailstock alignment, I'll use this test bar. It's just uh, between centres, driven with a, do a dog here. And uh, it just has a, a collar basically pressed onto each end of the bar. And I'll just do a light uh, facing cut across each collar. And if the tailstock's correctly aligned, I should get the same answer on both. So we'll cut across here. Without changing the setting, then go and cut across that one. Right, I've moved the tool post out of the way. Let's uh, see what we got. I wasn't shooting for any particular dimension here. I just wanted to take a, um, uh, a pass over both collars at the same depth of cut and uh, see what we got. That's 29.630 at that end. Hopefully that shows up. And uh, what have we got at this end? Twenty nine point six three two up this end, so within point double o two. That's barely a tenth, is it? Now that might be a bit freaky. I don't know, but anyway, clearly the tailstock alignment's pretty good. Oh, and I should add the collars are uh, two fifty apart. So uh, point double o two over two hundred and fifty. That's pretty good. Right, well I think that's finished it all. Um, I've done the uh, oil change in the headstock and the gearbox. 
sorted the tension and the drive belts out, uh, got the bed levelled again and the tail stock aligned and the test cuts and uh, I think we're good to go for another 12 months. Oh one thing though, I noticed by accident that when I had weight on this shelf, um, all of the weight, so all of the tail stock components, my uh, super accurate uh, spirit level could pick that up uh, and it just made a fractional difference to the levelling. So uh, here forwards I'll just be carrying um, the two things I use the most there and I'll make uh, new homes for the other heavy things. Um, yeah, so I hadn't really thought about it but I guess it is a bit of a lever putting twist on the bed and whilst it's pretty stiff bed there's no point giving it work it doesn't have to have. Anyway, uh, all done. Hope you found that interesting and uh, I'm on to other things. Cheers.